वेलकम टू द नैना रेडियो एक्सपीरियंस थैंक यू फॉर लिसनिंग इफ यू हैव बीन लिसनिंग टू द प्रीवियस एपिसोड्स यू कैन आस्क मी एनीथिंग आई एम नॉट रियली श्योर व्हाई अ लॉट ऑफ यू डोंट आस्क मी एनीथिंग मे बी बिकॉज़ द ऑडियंस ऑब्वियसली करेंटली इज रियली स्मॉल बट एंड ऑफ कोर्स आई थिंक ब्लॉगिंग इज इन रियली अ बिग डील इवन नाउ इन इंडिया I think it's this bubble that we are kind of living in only in the metro cities. So I can imagine that there probably aren't all those many questions, but I can't imagine that there aren't any questions. And I tend to look at a couple of other one other podcast for questions that might be relevant to the Indian audience as well. I also encourage you to look at it. It's called uh, uh the name of the brand is forcard f o h r c a r d and they have a youtube channel where the their podcast or video series is called a drink with james james nord is one of the founders of forcard which is a platform for bloggers to come and register and they connect them with brands and hopefully you get a collaboration that you can work with it's a brand collaboration they do a series as well and james answers questions that other bloggers aspiring bloggers any other questions that you might have about social media etc so sometimes i do look at that but in most cases the content there is more tailored for an american blogger or someone in the us or maybe even in europe for that matter as i have said many times in the past the indian market works very very differently blogging is still not a mainstream career option in india i i'm i'm there are people who come and tell me oh you're one of the first bloggers in india and you've been doing it for such a long time and you're successful and you've made a career out of it etc yeah it's kind of partly true but my mainstay still is photography i am a professional photographer that is where i make most of my uh, revenue and profits from blogging is a nice side gig to have I do make money while when I blog but 90% of the stuff that you see on my blog is still not client work these are not all brand collaborations i have been saying this since forever there was a time in between where i thought if i'm not getting any client work then maybe i shouldn't blog but that's not how a blog works you you blog and regardless of whether you're getting paid for it or not the idea was always to share what i'm doing so the goal behind my blog always was what am i doing what have i experienced where did i travel what did i eat what do i think about life in general what are the things that bother me on a daily basis what are the things that make me happy the idea behind the blog was to share this and i got into it because initially i received a lot of help by looking at other people who were blogging there weren't many bloggers in india when i started obviously 2004 hello but there were a lot of people abroad who used to blog and i used to look at their blogs and i used to read what they had to say and i realized that a lot of people were sharing information for free i didn't need a mentor in india or a photographer in india to tell me how the industry works here although that would have been insanely helpful as well and i could just look at these blogs or i could google the questions that i had and if i spent enough time doing research online i could find those answers of course it is different than when you have someone that you can actually talk to and ask them questions and how they did it compared to if you find information on the internet and these days in 2017 especially it is a lot harder to go online and search for something and find good information within the first one or two pages in those days i remember i used to go down 25 30 40 40 search result pages and do a lot of research now it's an unending abyss i cannot imagine what it must be like if especially when you're starting out when you don't even know what questions to ask so not just related to blogging you can ask me anything i don't I try not to be a preacher in the sense of saying that okay this is how it's done I'm always saying maybe you could look at it like this the way I want to do this podcast or my blog is to tell you how I have done whatever it is I do right now how I got here 
So if you have any pertinent questions, you want to know my journey, you want to know what my education is, you want to know how to deal with a particular client assignment, you want to look at stuff on my blog and then come back to me and ask me very specifically, okay, how did you work with that brand? As long as it's not extremely specific because, you know, there are confidentiality agreements with brands, which obviously I will not violate. But anything else, if you want, yeah, ask me. You can ask me in so many ways. So that was that was the part of what the idea behind the podcast and the blog and this whole deal of me being online is. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in this podcast specifically was blogging platforms in the sense blogging blogger group platforms for example uh, as i mentioned for card f o h r c a r d dot com you should check them out although it is more towards uh, international brands and international influencers i do have a profile there i still haven't gotten any work from there as such because again i'm in india i have interacted with a couple of brands who were curious and uh, i reached out to them as well and they said that yes they will look at it if they have anything related to india but i haven't had any paid work that has come in from there but i think it's a nice place to have a profile on especially if you have been around for a while and if you have a good blog and a you're a professional blogger similarly in india we have a ton of platforms i am not particularly uh, sure which ones work which ones don't especially for a blogger like me i focus on specific clients i don't say yes to everything i say yes to maybe one in nine inquiries uh, one in 10 inquiries if that um if you are into if i mean again the problem with most of these platforms the way i see it is that they are treating blogging like an off the shelf service which it is not you most of the inquiries that i get i am there on a couple of these platforms most of the inquiries that i get are Uh, you've been invited to be a part of this uh campaign and it clearly says that they want you to tweet with a certain hashtag and participate in a contest or something like that and they'll pay you like 5 rupees per tweet or 10 rupees per tweet or once i've seen 100 rupees per tweet the the thing is that that's treating it like a it, it's the same problem that is that is with trending a hashtag i don't see the value there for the brand i don't see the value in participating in something like that as a blogger myself and seriously 5 rupees a tweet i mean like oh my god like who what the hell are you doing if you're a blogger who's doing that i kind of understand i don't know maybe you need the money maybe you think it's a good way to make money but trust me it's not not in the long run it's not you might say that oh i'll do 100 tweets and you'll still make like what 500 bucks what that's nothing the you are not only devaluing your work you're also devaluing your audience because at the end of the day the audience is a commodity that's what you are selling as a blogger that's what i'm selling to my client brands and saying hey you know this is the kind of people that follow me this is the profile of those people you're selling them for 5 bucks that's 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 really disrespectful in my opinion that's not something i would do again i keep saying that these are the things that i talk about about how i would do them you don't necessarily have to follow what i do or you might have a different opinion which is great if you have a podcast please tell me i, I really want to learn and understand how these things work because working solo it just you know you sometimes you're in a bubble you're in your own bubble you don't really know what everyone else is doing because even even though i meet other bloggers it's we try not to talk about work because it invariably turns into we don't really want to talk about how much money what we did for free so it's it's because it's a competitive kind of thing so there isn't really a lot of conversation happening around the only person i actually talk about work and brands and how it's going etc is with my own sister akanksha redu who is also a blogger check out her blog akanksharedu.com but apart from that there is no one else that i actually talk about what happens in blogging oh wait there is i also talk uh, once in a while to saffron trail nandita ayer who's in bangalore she's a food blogger Uh, her website is saffron trail dot com s a f f r o n t r a i l dot com. You should check it out. She has a huge, massive following. She gets more page views than my blog does. But then, in that sense, she's been also doing it for a while. She's quite well known all over India, etc. So these are the few people that I actually talk about when it comes to work. What's happening in the market? What are the latest kinds of assignments that are happening? 
uh, it wouldn't make sense to pitch to a brand for example but apart from that it's still it's like i i don't really know what's happening i i try to do it the way i would like to do it but there are times where i look at someone else who does an assignment and i'm like hmm i did not think of that approach it can be done like that as well so these uh, okay coming back to the uh, blog blogger group platforms i honestly don't know what to call them uh, one of the initial ones that i signed up on was this one called get evangelized i have recently asked them to remove my account from there because i don't think i'm ready for that kind of uh, the kind that kind of platform uh, the other one that i'm on is blogmint.com the thing is that even with get evangelized and with blogmint although they have a platform i didn't get any assignments from the platform per se like it wasn't the client or the brand that was getting in touch with me it was still blogmint or get evangelized who wrote to me and said that hey you know we have a brand and they're interested in working with certain bloggers and we've rec- recommended your name and how much would you charge for something like this or this is what the client's budget is what are you willing to do in this so it has still been a very personalized approach now normally what happens is that it's not really normal i mean this is still a upcoming industry so it's really hard to say what's normal and what's not but what happens is that you have a person in the middle so it could be an agency a pr agency or a digital agency and they recommend your name to the client okay because they're like okay this person's blog and this person's brand will fit with your brand their audience is probably your target audience as well and they for that service they that brand is already their client you know if it's a pr agency that client already is paying that pr agency on a retainer so they are already making their money there whatever money i make uh, what i charge is what i make now there are some agencies who are trying to be just blogging managers blogger managers so what they are saying is that we'll get you clients and we will take a certain percentage of the money that you make now i have no problems with that you are doing business it's business i just don't want to see it <laughs> you know i don't want to i this is i charge x whether you quote 2x to the client first of all in india there is no clarity on that you should clearly tell the client that okay the blogger is quoted this much these are our fees so there are no standards here abroad for example there is a standard that i don't know the percentage but it's very clearly mentioned that these are the percentages that the agency charges so i don't really want to know i charge this much money i want that much money and after that what you what you want to charge on top of that that's fine as long as you are not misrepresenting me to the client as long as you are not telling the client oh nena charges actually 2x not x so because of that i'm not really sure how uh, i haven't been able to or actually haven't even pursued such a relationship i had spoken to a couple of people a few years ago about this on becoming my managers you know like celebrity managers because there was a lot of influx of inquiries that were coming in and i wasn't really being able to handle it nor was i being able to negotiate properly so we had spoken about it and they had said that they take a 10% commission and i had said that look this is what i want you want to add your 10% commission in that i i need to get this much money unfortunately that never really worked out because i think 3 4 years ago it was still quite low blogging really wasn't this big thing these is a uh, these platforms are trying to kind of do that but i think it's not really there the kind of permissions they need from connecting your facebook account or connecting your instagram account so usually even four card for example they need access to your profiles right online you connected to your google analytics you connected to instagram facebook pinterest twitter yeah so from that what they get is the number of impressions the number of followers the number of page views they don't ask for permissions like wanting access to your facebook friends list why is that a permission that's required so this is the problem that i had with get evangelize they recently did an overhaul of their entire platform and i think it looked a lot better they were trying to add more detail but i was not comfortable giving away details like access to my friends list for what like it's my facebook page business page is primarily where i share branded content i do share it on my personal profile also but i was just not comfortable with sharing my friends list i mean i i don't see why they need to know that who those friends are and then actually the number of permissions they required on pretty much every platform is where i was like okay maybe i don't i'm not comfortable with this with blogmint they have one person who calls me up and says that oh we have this client they want you to do this please let me know your rates these are the dates so she actually gets in touch with me personally there's no 
there's no automated system which says oh yeah uh, the you know this client has invited you when you have to write to them and things like that so there is still a person there in the middle so that's a very pr agency kind of approach maybe eventually they will uh, learn all this and they will automate it but for now and i get i get emails pretty much on a weekly or a uh, you know twice a month i get an email saying that we have this new platform please register as a blogger we'll get you clients and things like that and i do not sign up on them the only reason i had signed up on get evangelize and blogment because i kind of knew them they were really nice to me the communication was amazing and they were one of the first people to kind of start doing that there are other platforms like indie blogger i'm not an indie blogger i don't even you know it's it's like this thing that a lot of people um i i i try to do my own thing and i don't say yes to all kinds of work so it matters to me that the client gets in touch with me or even if the agency gets in touch with me there is a direct connection so so far pr agencies have been fulfilling the role of being the middle person middleman in trying to explain to clients how blogging works but there are all these other businesses that are trying to fill that bridge that gap because i think it is a gap until the old guard goes we need another party in our court to kind of explain to the client how this works i think a lot of bloggers don't really uh don't really focus on that part of the business to explain how how the client will get roi how can things be measured what what is it that they're selling which is a problem because firstly it is still something that's new in india also traditionally how it has worked in india it's different from how it has worked abroad so it's going to take some more time to kind of figure it out so such agencies in the middle who say that it's a platform where bloggers can come and sign up a lot of bloggers who sign up to these platforms are people who actually do tweets for 100 rupees per tweet which is not the kind of target audience that i want to work with i don't want to work with such clients and i don't want my audience to ever come across anything like that that i have done so for me that's the bigger thing to consider as a brand i need to be able to have direct access to the client and not just be a number to be you know checked off a list that okay this blog this blog this blog you know 100 blogs tak 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 no i nena.co is not that blog i don't want to be that blog i understand there might be uh, economies of volume because some bloggers might be making a lot of regular money smaller chunks of money over a period of time my thing is more i want to work with a meaningful brand a meaningful campaign somewhere where i can actually add value so that kind of stuff i have not yet seen on a platform yet there is another one that i recently signed up to uh, it's called niche niche.co n i c h e.co it was uh, originally independent but it, then it was bought over by twitter so twitter is now trying to do this thing of um getting creatives to uh, connect with brands and do work for them their model is not as cut and paste where you know they say okay connect all your profiles we want all these details this is the commission we charge etc it's more personalized which is again what blogmint also does but again what do i know i don't know what where all this is going i don't forecard itself is quite new even though it is uh, in new york and i don't really know how they actually connect uh, brands with bloggers and they do work specifically in the american market and i don't i don't think they do hundreds of uh hundreds of collaborations every month they 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 are doing collaborations and i do see those collaborations and some of them are pretty cool but that kind of thing coming into india it's going to take a while i i would say maybe another couple of years it's not happening before that till then we have to do with this on our own we have to connect with clients we have to tell them give them case studies of you know how this works how is it beneficial to other brands in the same category or in the same vertical or in a different industry it it lies on us these platforms i think will take some time to understand how this actually works they'll try to refine how it uh, you know is suitable for the brand as well as for the blogger and they make money from that so figuring that equation out i think is going to take some time it's still early days and i don't really want to be on a platform and you know get my ass kicked because i don't know what they're doing i don't know how they're representing me to the client i've had cases where they've gone and said yes to the client without even checking with me and then they come back to me and then they realize that okay i charge a certain amount of money or that the brand is not a fit for me 
so i say no and then they they say that oh but we've already said yes to the client and i'm like the well that's too bad what does that even mean why would you do that so i've had more than a handful of such cases happen to me and these are the people who actually they probably did it because they thought that i would be on board and they were trying to get it to work but i'm 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 suspicious and i don't know they might be agencies that tell the client that okay nana is on board and then might say that oh now she's no longer on board but we have these five other bloggers very close to the project date and then the client thinks that i am the asshole you know i am i don't know maybe that is happening i have no idea and i i try not to think about that because you know at after a point what all can you control you you do what you do you do the best you can do you work hard you meet people you do the whole networking business thing you do your work well etc and really just leave the rest you cannot control what people think about you you can't control why someone wants to work with you or doesn't want to work with you you can't control other people's business practices if there is a client who has heard something about me and says that oh we will never work with nana because xyz they never even met me in a way that's kind of good riddance because if they assume such things about people in general that's a huge red flag so i used to really worry about all this in the early days and oh my god what do they think about me they think i'm you know i'm an asshole they think i'm like rude or they they think that i i i am not at all flexible and now i'm like well they've never met me they can think pretty much whatever they want to think about me i have no control over that i don't think about people who think about me I try not to it's a daily practice let me remind you this is it's not an easy thing to do if you figured out the code and the magic word to make this work please tell me but it's a it's a daily practice where i try to focus on doing my thing there was a time in between where i was also worried about oh my god that blogger did that they worked with that luxury brand and i know they didn't get paid but the audience doesn't know that the audience thinks that luxury brand is working with these bloggers and as we like oh my god you know instead of disclosing that it's a paid assignment we should also start disclosing that this is an assignment that was done for free but again the idea is to come back to me and focus on me and the things that i will do and not do and like i said daily practice i think about how it benefits my brand in the long run i think about how it benefits my peace of mind in the long run how the brand will perceive me or my value in the long run it's all a long run game in the short run you might do an assignment where you're getting a lot of money and it might not fit with your brand but that also affects the perception of what your audience sees you as they might be like oh my god suddenly so much brand brand talking and now suddenly you know just for the money whatever that's one of the reasons i don't photograph weddings anymore because the money was like amazing the money was amazing but after every time i photographed a wedding and came home i would not stop bitching about it i would not stop talking about it the anecdotes were unending and they were mostly horrifying like i a bride once put me up in a hotel room it called hotel definition of hotel just changed for me where the window was broken and it was basically showing the next room which was like arms length across i could have gone into the next room and there were men sitting and drinking and smoking and playing cards there and they expected me to sleep in that room for the night so that i would be fresh enough to go next morning and shoot the entire day of the wedding i have had such horrendous experiences and i used to creep about it so much that i decided that i don't think this is something that i can do it was really hard to take that call because well the money was amazing but no it's not worth it in the long run wasn't for me i can make great images i know that but i cannot do it i have tried to get back into it right now as well this year i was thinking maybe i'll give it a shot maybe i'll do two hour events or three hour events and that's it i will not do the whole a uh, thing where you know the function takes from morning till evening or from early morning 3 am till whatever time and i was like i won't do that i'll do only 2 hour 3 hour events like mehndi or the sangeet or the reception or just a couple shoot but i maybe i don't know maybe i'll do that but full weddings no i cannot do that i just cannot do that like not happening 
and the market has also changed in the last two years it's no longer that oh there are these just 10 photographers that you can hire there are hundreds of them now and i really don't want to compete with that kind of pressure so this is yeah i mean i'm again focus in 2017 is to meet people and to focus on myself i will try not to look at what other bloggers are doing i will try not to look at what other campaigns and other brands are doing. I'm going to try and focus on doing the kind of work that I have always wanted to do. And with a lot of help from so many people in the middle, like a lot of PR agencies bring work to me regularly. There are clients who get in touch with me regularly. I work with them every six to 12 months. My goal is mainly just one big assignment in a month and then a little bit stuff here and there, go to an event, post an Instagram photo. Uh, talk about something else, do my fragrance of the month column, which reminds me this month's column, I still need to edit, I've shot the photos, etc. It's Chloe, by the way, Fleur de Parfum. I don't know if I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> I love French, the language. I love the British accent though. I know that's a bit of trivia, but yeah, that's pretty much it, what I wanted to talk about today. You let me know what you guys think of platforms like Blogmint and Forecard. Definitely check out uh, Drink with James. Uh, it's on YouTube. He talks about a lot of, you know, what to do on Instagram, how to blog, guest blogging, this, that and the other. It's pretty cool. Except the fact that he makes me want to drink booze every time I see that. It's called a drink with James and he literally has a drink in front of him every time. They also do interviews sometimes. So definitely check that part out. It's quite cool. Um, there, I don't know of any other blogging related podcasts per se or video series for as such. Um... In India, especially, it's, I don't really know who's doing it. Uh, if they talk specifically about the blogging industry, please tell me. I'm really curious to know who is talking about the blogging industry or even the photography industry in India. Again, there are lots of American ones, but I haven't heard of any in India. Even if there are particular episodes that talk about blogging or photography, please tell me. Please, please, please leave a comment. I would love to uh, go and listen to what they're doing and maybe get ideas on what more I should talk about. And yeah, ask me anything. So that's it for now. Thank you for listening. This was the 38th episode of the Nana Redo Experience. Bye bye. Until next time.